it will be available. It will be available on our Facebook channel. First, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our. Uh, there we go. Here's some basic information about today. Uh, welcome everybody to our first Tuesday table mentoring session. We'll do this from now through May, just like last year on Tuesdays from noon to one, we'll have a message for about 20 minutes and then spend the rest of the hour in discussion. Before we get too much into Tuesday table, we just wanna praise God for this. M24 this past weekend, Here's a picture of Sunday's cross refresh service. You really can't tell by this picture, but there was about 900 men of all ages there, including a real wave of young guys. Very impressive to see. Um, and then here on Sunday, on Sunday, you could see the worship service really special. So we praise God and we resist our own pride for all of the hard work that was there and say, thank you, Father, for 900 men. And thank you for the Holy Spirit showing up in force. So today we welcome Kyle Phillips of Grace Church in Tehachapi. He's going to talk to us about an introduction to the journey and the symbolism of the bridge, of the journey of people coming to faith through crossing the bridge referenced in Journey to the Inner Chamber which most of us are familiar with. After Kyle is done, we will have discussion questions and we'll come back to those in just a little while. For now, let's stop the share. Let's welcome in Henry. And Henry, introduce us to Kyle, please. Yeah, uh, for sure, Phil, thank you. Hey, before we do, uh, man, I wanted just to take a moment. This is, a, this is our first kind of table, a Tuesday table mentoring uh, seminar we got going on. So I just kind of wanted to honor all the small groups uh, that are there and just kind of hear who's sitting at each table. Uh, and for me, it feels a little clunky. You know, we got a new facility that we're in right now, but I had a good buddy tell me that anything that's worth doing well is worth starting poorly. So uh, forgive us if it's a little clunky this morning or this afternoon. Uh, so, hey, would we kind of, if you got a table, would you just kind of introduce the people that are around your table today? Maybe uh, Newberg, we'll start with you. Hey, at least your hair is on point. Hey, at least, at least your hair is on point, brother. Your hair is on point. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Brad Newberg here. We got Mike Mulligan, the Mike Mulligan, Graham Harrison, Mike Rexroth, new brother in Christ, John. Uh, we got Dennis Little John, Eric Little John, Little John Connection. We got Carlos and Devon. Nice. Uh, Shirley, what about your table? Did you perk out here? And figure out this on new thing. Hey guys, um, yeah, we're here at Valley Baptist. We have about ten guys here in the room. I'll give you a, a real quick spin around. Give them a wave, Jeremy. Matt, Matt, Matt. Come on, we're gonna do the wave over here. <laughs> Joseph, Fred, over here. So okay, yeah, excited to be with you guys. Hey Jessica, what about your table? Can I just say that I'm super excited for this? Look at all these people, all the little boxes. <laughs> so we are at the Webdales today. It's myself, Claudia, Dana, Amara, Emily, and Haley. Awesome. And we're probably waiting on a couple more. Hey, Bartel, give us a little shout out from your table. Well, I just, I just took a bite of my taco. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go around the room. You can see everybody. Go ahead, Mike. Mike Ping, Randy Steiner, Zach Smith, Taco Dan Bartell, <laughs> Gary Bean, Jay Olson, Steve Webdell. Nice. Nice. And Franco, what about you? So we have all of us had to go out and repark our cars. We were parked in a fire zone. So <laughs> we were coming back in. But I have Tina, my wife. I have uh, Ralph, Rawl, and uh, then some more guys are going to trickle in. Okay. All right. Well, here uh, in Tashby, you've got uh, Kyle Phillips. You've got uh, the son of Mike Mulligan, Philip Mulligan here. You've got Jeff Duff, Danny Oriana, Tim McLaughlin, Chris Cummings, Daryl Ragsdale, Big Dave Whitrock, and uh, Dave Very Wood uh, joining us here in Tashby. So uh, with that, I'm going to pass it on over to uh, Kyle Phillips, and he's going to kind of kick off uh, the seminar today. Uh, and yeah, we'll just trade. Great. So we're going to 
What's that? Give the introduction of how you're connected here. Oh, I'm Pastor Grace Fellowship. Been hanging out with these guys for a long time. Uh, excited to, let's see, be here and be a part of this. I'm trying to, where's the view over here? Speaker view. Okay. I'm not maximized, but that's all right. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get used to looking at whoever, whoever, whoever I'm looking at. Uh, we're really excited about uh, the influencers generally and, and, and the uh, journey groups went through the journey group. Um, gosh, and Zoom talk, with the West there. Meal on, the, uh, on Zoom. Uh, man, it's just, it's just good stuff. I call it really, a, I mean, just a front porch experience that really does a powerful way job of, you know, reaching into guys' lives, especially folks who are man, far away from church of the kingdom and kind of breaking them open and, and drawing them near. Just a, just powerful, powerful. Um, sorry, sorry, I missed M24. I had a family wedding. Uh, I, I, I live, well, how far do I live from, from the campground? 1.1 uh, mile. 1 .1 mile from the to campground. The yeah, to the lake. So <clears throat> sorry, I missed it. But uh, man, just excited to hear it all. Okay, so my job is, is, is to just kind of introduce uh, the teaching with a focus uh, on the bridge. Uh, and what I thought I would do is just kind of share my hope for the journey groups and the influ influencers broadly. And just, just really quick, you know, four beats. It begins with intimacy with God. I mean, journey into the inner chamber, the inner chamber where Jesus is sitting in that chair with the fire going. And, and that's where we want to bring guys and that's where we want to live we really want to i mean to, to get to that place with an industry with the lord where he begins to talk about stuff that needs to be talked about in our lives and in, and in our families and, and in the world uh it be, so it begins there in the inner chamber in the inner chamber the lord moves us towards uh integrity where he takes the shattered broken pieces of our lives and begins to put them together so, so that we really do become the people he has created us to be, he has called us to be, that we might exercise what I call the, um, or the great mandate of Genesis 1 26, that we might reflect his glory by exercising his authority, you know, and hurting and breaking, broken world, bringing order out of chaos, which leads to um, integration. Uh, Henry knows that I, I think of church in terms of, uh, of the church of Tehachapi, that, that we all have different fellowships, but we are truly uh, one in Christ. And when Les and the gang first showed up at our Together Bible study, we broadened that to say the church of Kern County. Uh, and that's really taken root through the influencers and, and the junior groups. And this group here, I don't know, Phil, I guess you're in Pasadena, right? Yeah, nod your head so, so we can say the Church of, of California and, and mean that without embarrassment and uh, Cummings is, is somewhere in Florida. So we can say the Church of the USA. Uh, and this is that's exciting to, to know that the Lord is binding us together so that the unity that Jesus prays for in John 17 isn't some kind of, you know, mystical you know, sometime later, but really is a realized reality as we get to know one another, trust one another, hear the voice together, and just do all the, just want the, the incredible things that, that the Lord wants to do. So, you know, as we kind of move into this season of journey, of the journey groups, that, that's my hope. In and through with God, where it begins, that moves towards uh, integrity for the followers of Jesus, integration for you know, for the broader, you know, families of Christ that gather in different congregations, you know, throughout the week on, on a Sunday to, oh, the final, now the final engagement in a, in a hurting in, in, in broken world. Man, makes sense? Everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Man, is that do I, and, 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 and because you guys experienced with the journey groups, that's, that's not, I mean, you guys have, have tasted that, right? You guys have, have experienced that and seen bits of that. I mean, over 900 guys <laughs> up at Indian Hills Campground. 50 Ooh. churches represented. How many? 50. 50 churches. There you go, man. I mean, this, it, this is a vision that's unfolding, man. It's coming alive. 
That's what Jesus prayed for. Him. I'm just so excited about that. All right. So as we begin um, approaching the bridge, the journey to the inner chamber uh, in, in, in Rocky's book there that everyone's reading, we, uh, we come to that place of the bridge. Two familiar metaphors or images for evangelism or, or ministry. One that, uh, that, that I think we're all familiar with is one beggar showing another beggar where to find bread. Right? That, that anchors our, our, our dependency in Christ, that we all recognize that whatever we got to give comes from him. And as we connect, as we stay connected to him, uh, he gives us what we need so that we can connect uh, others to him. One beggar showing another beggar where to find bread. Great image. The image Rocky uses, uh, the influencer is the armored up guy, you, you, you know, the white knight. I, I don't know if he describes it as a white knight, but I see the white guy, horse. White horse. I just see the, you know, the, the white glowing guy, you know, going through uh, this this massive crowd of, of refugees, uh, you know, grabbing one and, you know, inviting him to, uh, to mount the horse as influencer, that's the knight's name, brings him to the bridge. And at that bridge, refugee is at a crisis, has a decision to make. Will he cross that bridge and enter into the castle that represents the kingdom, which is right on the edge of that inner chamber where, where we meet with Jesus. And that's really all about intimacy. On page 16 of uh, the journey to the inner chamber, Rocky writes this. He says, what you're seeing in these pitiful individuals describing refugee is the true inner condition of the heart's and souls of mankind. That is why they look as if they are starving. Part of the power of the journey groups is that we've all been there. And, and, and we've all experienced the transition from, from starving in, in, in isolation to being connected to Jesus and one another and, and beginning to feast. So what we got to appreciate when we have guys at the foot of that bridge on the other side is that we're asking them to enter into uh, intimacy. Mm -hmm. And all the men on the call re re really understand that for most men, intimacy is a foreign language, not part of our world. How are you doing? What's the general answer? Good. Good, fine. What does that mean? It means I'm handling it. All hell is breaking loose beneath the surface, at work, in the family, but I'm living in the delusion that I'm on top of things and I'm handling it. Everything is good or fine, right? Um, Now, with the women on the call, there are there are, there are different issues with uh, with intimacy, and I'll, I'll I'll let you gals as you, as you talk together um, process that. But my hunch is there's something about judgment and acceptance with the gals. I, I was talking to a couple. Uh, uh, wise women in the church, and I asked about that, and they're saying, "Man, if 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 you see." Two, two women walk in the room, the first thing they're doing is checking each other out. How do I measure up, right? Not a part of my world. <laughs> Gals, you, you can talk about that, but it's a real barrier to, to authentic intimacy, you know, with the women between women. For guys, intimacy is just a foreign language. Most of us aren't in touch with our feelings. Well, we got three feelings, right? Mad, glad, <laughs> 
and desire. <laughs> and I'm smelling pizza and I've just kind of gone on to my keto diet to, to, uh, 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 to keep where I want to be. And, and my desire, my desire is screaming, right? We're real familiar with those three feelings, which really frustrates our wives. Because they, uh, they ask us, how you doing? And what do we say? Good. Good. What do you say, Dave? <laughs> fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> and, and they say, uh -oh. and, and, and the wives die a little bit that day because they know everything's not fine. Or it might be fine, but there's a whole lot more to the conversation. But intimacy for most of us, it's a foreign country. We don't have the language of feeling or, I mean, talking personally, I shut off my feelings when I was in junior high. I, mean, I, did, I didn't, I mean, those, those three feelings were honestly the only feelings, you know, I got. You know, words like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling vulnerable, I'm feeling weak, and I'm a little discouraged, I'm a little confused. You know, these, these things are not, there are things we'll think about, but we won't necessarily quickly bring them into a conversation unless there's a high degree of connection, which is, which, which is what happens on the other side of that bridge, mm -hmm. right? When you're on that side of the bridge, what we're doing is inviting refugee who's dying because he's not connected. Not connected to the Lord, not connected to others, to cross into the kingdom where we can be truly who we are. And everything might be fine when we understand <laughs> what stands behind fine is what we need to process and talk about and get in touch with and get a handle on. Does that make sense? That that so what so what we're uh, we're going to be doing in just a few minutes is is just kind of put our finger on man what is a what's a story of vulnerability that you can share in your journey groups. To, to kind of invite others to share. This is what happens in that one day retreat that's coming up. But to begin to build connection so the guy really feels empowered. Hey, I can, I can trust these guys. I can trust what they're saying about the Lord and the Holy Spirit's in that. But really to appreciate that what, what we're asking guys to do, we're, we're not selling tickets to heaven. Right. Give your life to Jesus, go to heaven when you die. That's not what we're marketing. We're inviting people to a journey to discover the living Christ and what he wants to do in the midst of the rough and tumble of your life. Amen, guys. Is that true? Amen. That's true. And, and for us to be aware that when we bring guys to that bridge, we're asking them to do something that they probably never done. Get in touch with what they need, their deepest need. Feel the pain of it, the vulnerability of it. That this, you know, the, and I don't like the space of it. And let them know, hey, we don't need to live there. Yes. Okay. Okay, so the influencer. Are you guys wearing shiny white armor? You know, on that on that white steed, right? Uh, that's why I like the beggar showing another beggar where to find bread because I feel a lot more like a beggar than I do like a guy on on a white horse. But both images are fun, you know. And of course, Rocky uses that image for a purpose. Page twenty one on the journey. Uh, Rocky writes this, influencer is filled with the Lord's spirit because he comes directly from the feast in the inner chamber. I'm going to read that. That's a good statement. 
influencer is filled with the Lord's spirit because he comes directly from the feast in the inner chamber. So journey group leaders, right? Here's the big question. Is that true of you? Mm -hmm. See, I mean, do you, can you give a hearty amen on that? Or do you say, man, I'm still working on it. Or man, I really want to get there. See, unless we're spending much time with the Lord, which, which just means opening ourselves to the reality of his presence by his spirit more and more each day, you know, we're just selling something. And Americans are highly refined, sophisticated consumers who can, who can smell a sales pitch from a million miles away. Right? And most Americans don't need what we're selling. But if we're talking about life, connecting with the Lord in the inner chamber, it, it doesn't cost anything except your life. Right? And, you, and you don't sell that. Mm -hmm. You don't sell that. Because people are like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. So that, that means a few things, right? Taking the time. Darn it. I'm going to take the time. If it means I got to set the alarm clock an hour earlier, if it means I got to get to bed an hour earlier, if it means I got to, you know, in, instead of that power lunch I usually do, I'm going to have a real power lunch, you know, with, with the Lord, shut the door to my office and get there. Right? Make the commitment now to make the time. You got a calendar. <laughs> You got a schedule. You can write an IC interchange and put it in there. And you make darn sure nothing else fills that space. You've got that responsibility. You guys do it all the time. Right? Have you done it with the Lord? Yeah. Okay. Once you're there, <clears throat> open the Bible. <laughs> Open the Bible. The Lord wants to speak to us through the scriptures. He, he, wants to, he wants to reveal incredible things about himself and about ourselves. So not only do we open the Bible, but we need to learn to listen deeply, to hear his voice, to be okay with silence just to paddle around until the Holy Spirit surfaces something. Okay. In, in the journey group with Wes, uh, we were doing the, you know, the, one of the early star exercises in the workbook. And you know, Philippians 4.4, 4, I'm a pastor. I'm right? being anxious for nothing, but anything in prayer and supplication. Make your request be made to me. Let your request be made known to God and the peace of God with regard to heart and minds of Christ Jesus. Man, I've known that verse for 40 years. I'm sitting with the Lord, Bible open, just doing my duty on the journey group through, through, through this workbook. And the Lord says, why do you burden Chris, my wife, with your anxiety? And it stopped me. I said, What? Yeah, you do that all the time. All the grief you've given her, you don't realize it, but you're displacing your anxiety. You're giving her your anxiety when you share it with her. When there's some small thing that really doesn't amount to a hill of beans and you, and you unload on her. That's all about your anxiety, about it had nothing to do with what's going on here. Right? Right? Be anxious for nothing. In prayer and supplications, let your request be made, be, be made known to me. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yes, Lord. Right? That's the kind of stuff that happens in the inner chamber. This stuff we're, we're not in touch with, but the Lord is. And we take the time, open the Bible, listen deeply. He's going to put his finger on it. Okay. And then 
there we, we feel deeply and intentionally. You know, feeling all the time, man, I, I've been giving my wife grief for 30 years. And it's confused her. Oh, man. I'm sad about that. You know, I don't want to do that anymore. Go into that space of vulnerability, of, of, of failure, knowing that God is a God of grace and he loves us and he's going to fix us. And then respond faithfully. Walk it out with others. That's what goes on in the inner chain. And that's what guys pick up on. It's not you. It's what the Holy Spirit is doing in you. Deep calls to deep, see. See. And so you're standing at the bridge with this refugee who doesn't know the language of intimacies, foreign country. The question is, do you? <laughs> have, have you lived there with the Lord? And with your brothers and, and with your sisters, you see. And that you know, involves the, you know, you know you, what happens in the journey group Page 20 on the journey to the inner chamber, Rocky says, influencer knows refugee needs more than food and water, that he needs unconditional acceptance. Influencer's work is always to point a human back to his king. Yeah, it's, it's all about modeling intimacy. Yeah. Tell your story first, right? Where you felt like a failure or a week or what what are you scared about or are you anxious about? Right. No one's gonna think less of you, right? But but it'll it'll open the door. And then the, the, then from there things deep acceptance, deep acceptance. Those guys need to know that there's nothing they can share, nothing they can share that's gonna throw you. Because truth be told, everybody is worse than you know, including yourself. And if you just understand that, that's why the Lord died. And that's why he's deep work, working deep in our hearts. Man, it doesn't matter what you say. See, deep acceptance, you know, that active listening, you know, staying in the space, speaking back what you've heard to, to make sure that you've heard accurately, right? Never giving advice. That's Jesus' job, right? Just asking those active questions and make sure I've, I've heard clearly. You know, and inviting the other believers in the group to share their stories. Right? So, so that the Lord can, can, can develop a true culture of grace. You know, what's, what's said in here stays in here stuff, taking, taking those kinds of rules seriously. So that when the guys come together, they really are meeting with the Lord. And it feels like it. Right. And it knows it. And, and you know it. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So so we're at the foot of the bridge. Right. Simple and clear about the invitation. Simple and clear. John 14, 6. A lot of places you can go in scripture. 14, 6 is as good as anything. Jesus said, I'm the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. What do you think? You want to give your life to Jesus? No counseling. You know, that quality of empathy that says, hey, it's okay. No, it's not okay. No, 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 no fixing. Let me tell you how to deal with that. You don't know how to deal with that. The only person who does is Jesus, which is why you want them to connect them to Jesus. You see. And this is what's so cool about the journey. I mean, the, the journey to the inner chamber, and this is the first handful of weeks, right? And we need to be absolutely clear. That's not the end. It's the beginning. 
The goal is in not getting them across the bridge. The goal is in getting them there, the inner chamber, and then help them understand what goes on there. So Rocky says this, <clears throat> almost as if I was hearing a taped replay, I hear influencer say to refugee in his own voice, you once were lost, but now you have been found. You once were blind, but now you see. You once were filthy with sin, but now you are clean. You once were a wandering vagabond with no country of your own, but now you are a citizen of God's kingdom. You once were an orphan, but now you are a child of the King of Kings. You once were called refugee, but that name has been changed just like you have been changed. And then it's great. Your new name is anybody know the new name? Learner. Learner. That's just the contemporary word for disciple. So Jesus says, Go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you, and I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. And with that last statement, Jesus says, reminds us that that he is the master disciple maker, that he will be in us as we are faithful to his call to be about that business. And then Paul tells us his learn, Timothy, what you've heard and seen in me in the presence of many witnesses, and trust to faithful others. We'll be able to Teach others also. And so we have 900 men at, uh, at M24 because the influencers have been, have been faithful to their call. Mm -hmm. So it begins at the bridge. It doesn't end on the other side of the bridge. It begins. Phil, you want to introduce those questions? Thank you, Kyle. Well done. Uh, I will. And if you're watching along, please uh, feel free to write these down. Uh, the first one, and this will go back to the beginning. Uh, we have the spinning wheel of death there. <laughs> All right, Kyle, let's you and I team up on this. First, what are your hopes? One is what are your hopes for the one. next nine what months? Are your, what are your hopes? Hopes for yeah. the year. As, as group leadership. What are your hopes for the next nine months? Two, what are your fears for the next nine months in your journey group? Three, how do you model vulnerability or where is your vulnerability so that you may model it for others in your group? Hopes, fears, what is your vulnerability that you may model for others so they may be vulnerable in the journey group. <laughs> 